In this lesson, we are going to have a look at the difference between the effective and nominal interest rate. I've previously mentioned that an interest rate is usually given as a rate per year. In the previous lesson, however, we heard that that annual interest rate can be compounded in many different ways, so it can have different compounding periods. When the period the interest rate is based on and the compounding period differs, it is called a nominal interest rate. This is the interest rate that the bank offers you. When interest is compounded more than once a year, the actual interest rate accumulated during that year is more than the annual interest rate given due to the effect of compound interest. Let's have a look at a simple example. You invest 100 Rand at 10% interest per year compounded monthly for one year. So we can now substitute into our compound interest formula and here our interest is 10% but it is compounded monthly so we divide by 12 and it is for one year and we need to convert that to months. And if you now go and calculate this final amount you will have 110 Rand and 47 cents. And this means that you received an interest of 10 Rand and 47 cents which will be the same as an interest rate of 10,47% per year instead of the original given 10% per year. And the reason for this is because it was compounded monthly. This 10,47% is then called the effective interest rate. And the effective interest rate is the actual rate that the account receives per year. In our example, we work with an actual value of 100 Rand to determine the difference between the nominal and effective interest rate. This formula can, however, determine the difference between the nominal and effective interest rates without an amount. The most important thing to remember here is that this helps you to determine the difference between the nominal and effective interest rates per year. So even though an amount can be borrowed or invested for more than a year, we are interested in determining the interest rate that that amount will receive per year. In this formula, IF is for the effective rate, INOM is the nominal rate, and M is the number of compounding periods per year. Let's have a look at examples where we can use this formula. Example 1. Calculate the effective interest rate for a nominal rate of 11% per year compounded semi-annually. So here all the necessary information was given and we can start substituting. We need to calculate the effective rate, so that stays just like that on the left. And on the right, our nominal rate was given as 11% and I'm reminding you that you have to write it in decimal form. And the M value is the number of compounding periods per year. And here it is compounded semi-annually, so we divide by 2. Our exponent is that same compounding period of 2. And now we need to get the I effective alone. So we are going to take that whole bracket and subtract 1. And that will give us 0, 0,113025. And to get the effective interest rate, the percentage, we still need to multiply by 100. And then we can round to two decimals to get 11,30% per year. Example 2. Jana invests 20,000 Rand at an interest rate that is compounded monthly for five years. Calculate the nominal rate if the effective rate is given as 9,38% per year. So even though here we are given an amount and a number of years, we want to calculate the nominal rate, and for that we are going to focus only on the rates and how they are compounded. So here the effective rate was given as 9,38%, which we write as a decimal. The nominal rate is the one that we want to calculate, but we were given the information that it is compounded monthly, so our number of periods per year will be 12. This 12 will then also be our exponent.
And now we want to solve i nominal. So I'm going to start off by taking the 1,0938 that's on the left and taking the 12th root of that to get rid of the to the power of 12 on the right hand side. Next up, I'm going to get rid of the plus 1 on the right by subtracting 1 on the left. And then I'm still left with the divided by 12 on the right hand side. And that is why my last step will be to multiply by 12. Remember that you're not allowed to round off until your final step. So when I calculate this on my calculator, I will have 0, 0.0899 that still continues. And to get the nominal rate, then I still need to multiply by 100. And now I'm allowed to round and then I will get 9% per annum. Example 3. You want to borrow money from a bank and receive two interest rate options. 19% per annum compounded monthly or 21% per annum effective. Which option would you choose? We can of course only compare these two options if they are compounded in the same way. The 21% is already the effective rate and that means that you definitely receive 21% per year. So I'm going to choose to take the 19% compounded monthly and convert this to an effective rate so that I can compare the two options. So I'm going to determine the effective rate of the 19% and I know that my nominal rate is 19%, so 0, 0,19 and it is compounded monthly, so I'm going to divide by 12 and have an exponent of 12. So to solve the effective rate, I'm going to take the bracket and subtract 1, which will give me a decimal of 0, 0,20745 that still continues. And to then get my effective rate, I still need to multiply by 100, which will give me a rounded answer of 20,75% per annum. So the 19% per annum that is compounded monthly is actually an effective rate of 20,75% per year. Because in this case we are borrowing money, I would like to pay the smallest possible interest rate and therefore I will choose the option of 19% per annum compounded monthly because its effective rate is smaller than the 21% per annum effective. If these two options were given for an investment, I would of course choose the 21% because then I would want to receive as much interest as possible. The skill of converting between the nominal and effective interest rates is clearly an important skill to have when doing your own finances.